What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be all about this. So as you can see here, I've got a three horsepower saw stop. I've been thinking about this table saw forever, so I finally broke down and got one. So today's video will be an unboxing, an assembly, and I'll give you a couple reasons as to why I selected this saw over some others. So the first thing I need to do is get the saw out of my truck bed onto the ground. I have absolutely no idea how I'm gonna do this by myself. On SawStop's website, it says that this saw weighs about 450 pounds, so this could be interesting to say the least. I'm hoping to take the saw apart piece by piece and take everything out one at a time, but we'll see what happens. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. That said, let's see if we can get this thing out of the box and get into the action. Before I explain anything on this saw, I just want to say that this saw is very heavy and if this thing is to fall during the unloading process, you can either damage the saw or worse hurt yourself. So use common sense, use help if you have it to unload this. And as a disclaimer, don't try to do this the way that I did. So I first unloaded all the accessories and I was feeling pretty confident at this point until I got to the saw. Then I had absolutely no idea what to do. So I figured that the only thing I could do was just to go for it. So I hopped up on the truck bed and started taking the thing apart piece by piece. Everything was packed up very well, so I just started tearing into all the boxes and removing everything. It took me all of about one minute before I was dropping pieces. So you may think, well, why aren't you being more careful with a new saw? Well, this is me being careful. So I got everything unloaded, tried to pull it by this strap for whatever reason. I thought that that would work. It did not. So again, I hopped up on there and then just kind of pulled the saw as far onto the tailgate as I could get it. So to actually move this thing from the truck bed to the ground, I decided I could use a weight bench. So I thought about it, thought about it some more, and then I even read the instruction manual to see if it mentioned using a weight bench. It did not, so I figured I was on my own. So I slid the saw as far to the end of the tailgate that I could get, and then very slowly I transferred it from the tailgate to the bench. Now the bench was on an incline originally, so it was only a small drop. For disclaimer purposes, I'm not going to show you how I got the bench to a decline, but I did do that and then slowly slid it onto the ground. With the saw on its side, you flip it over to its back. This part is actually in the manual, and then you can stand the saw up. So the mobile base goes down, and to prevent you from having to watch me break my back, I edited the actual part of me lifting it out. And just like that, we have a table saw on the ground. So the power switch is actually stored inside the saw, so the first thing you do is you cut that out and then it comes out packaged very well, so no issues there. Here's a look at the bolts and the hardware that came this. Again, everything packaged very nicely, easy to understand. This is the outer housing that the motor will sit in, so inside of this you get the push stick, the miter gauge, and the wrenches that will put the saw blade on. So with everything unpacked, I first decided to put the wheels for the blade lift and tilt on. So this little piece gets tapped in and then there's a slot that the wheel will line up directly on that. After that's put on, you put a screw in that will clamp that into place. Now the wheels are solid metal. They seem to be very high quality and they're super smooth whenever you do use them. Next, the dust port pops out the back of the saw. There's three screws that you can attach this with. Now if I had to complain about anything, this could be a little bit longer. No big deal though. And then the motor housing can pop on the side of this. Now rather than using bolts, there's a long bar that slides all the way up through the side of this and then clamps in place. This was super easy to put on. I actually really like this design. So the top of the saw is coated with an oil covered paper. So you pull that off and then I just wiped the top off with a paper towel. The finish on the cast iron was pretty well perfect and it was awesome to see this surface after I got these off. So the wings are packaged separately in these boxes. There's two of these. Now the wings do have a front and a back. I learned that the hard way, which you'll see in a little bit. So make sure you have the chamfered lip facing forward and the flat lip facing the back of the saw whenever you put them on. Now these were kind of difficult to put on mainly just because they're heavy and sort of awkward, but there are four bolts underneath. So you put one bolt in and then you can put the other bolts in. Again, this is more awkward than anything, but I found out that after you get the bolt started it helped to use a regular wrench i couldn't get a socket in there there's an awkward lip on the underside of the wing but using a wrench did help me to get these on a lot quicker here's just a closer look at the four holes where the bolts will go from the wing into the actual tabletop 
So once one side is on, you can put the other side on. Now I help prop this up with a sawhorse. As I said earlier, it's a little awkward to do. So a sawhorse with a board propped up to get it at the same height really helped me to get this on. So you wanna put the wings on and snug the bolts, but not tighten them. You then level each of them just kind of by pushing up on the wing and then tightening the bolt down until they are finally level. This is actually pretty easy once you have the wings on. And now remember when I said that I put this wing on backwards? Well, yeah. So about right here is when I realized that the lip on the middle piece did not line up with the lip on the back piece. And a face of pure excitement was my reaction knowing that I would have to take this wing back off and do it again. So after the wings are put on in the proper direction, you can then bolt the on off switch up under the saw. This is only two bolts, but I actually found it a little more difficult than it needed to be. But I did get it on and then it was time to put the saw blade in. So when I filmed this part originally, I did a really poor job, so here's a better view of how you put the saw blade in. So you lift the throat plate up, unscrew the nut that holds the washer on the arbor, then the washer itself comes off to where you can then put the saw blade right down in. So the blade slides on the arbor, you'll put the washer back over top of that, and then put the nut back on. So it's really just like any other saw blade. Now the riving knife on this thing lines up with a couple holes. So you pop this lever up, pop the riving knife in, snap the lever down, and then it's secure in place. Then you can just tighten the blade with a couple standard wrenches. These do come with the saw. No need to over tighten. And then when the blade is on, you can pop the throat plate back on and then you finish putting the blade in. So I crank the blade down and as I mentioned earlier, this is a super smooth process with those wheels. Next up were the rails that would mount the extension table and the fence for the table saw. So as I've mentioned earlier in a couple of times, everything was packaged really well and I was really impressed. Now whether that saw stop or where I got the table from, I'm not sure. But the way that this was packaged, I don't think it could have been any better. Here's another box of the hardware that it came with and then here's a look at the instructions. So obviously you don't want to read all the instructions without putting this together. But everything is very detailed with lots of text and pictures. So to attach the front rail, you start with the rail on an angle, put the first bolt in, and then you can put all the other bolts in. Now because watching somebody put bolts in is boring, I just wanted to say that I picked this saw up from Withrow Sharpening Service and Sales in Huntington, West Virginia. I called them in advance and they had one of these in stock. Now these guys were awesome by the time I got there they had it outside ready to be loaded up and I was on my way in about an hour or so so if you're in southern Ohio eastern northern Kentucky or West Virginia in the tri-state area be sure to check them out now one thing that I was a little surprised with once I got everything unpackaged was that the outfeed table frame was made from wood now this really isn't a big deal and I'm kind of being extra picky here but I figured for the price of the saw that this would be some type of aluminum or metal frame. Now again, it's an outfeed table. This will never be seen. So it's really not that big of a deal. And it did go on and level up pretty easily. And after the outfeed table was on, I could finally put the front fence rail on. So this has the measurements and it also is the guide rail for where the fence will go. Now this just bolts up with seven or eight bolts through the bottom. Again, kind of boring, but this is how you assemble it. This would be a great time to tell you that my boots are the sponsor of today's video, but since that's not true, let's focus on the mobile base. So there's a foot pedal on the base that pumps up and lifts the saw up, and then it's actually really easy to move across the floor. Now I'm planning on keeping this in one place for the most part, but if I wanted to move it, it is very easy to move. Once it's in place, there's a down lever that you tap with your foot and the saw slowly sits down. Here's a quick look at the plug. So the saw is 220, so make sure that you have the correct outlet. I ran a new circuit from the rafters so it would be out of the way. And with it plugged in, you can crank the blade up and turn it on. There are two separate switches to actually turn this on, but at this point, I'll hush up so you can hear the saw start. So here it is finally assembled all together and this is close to where it'll set for when I finally put it to use. Now after I put this thing together overall I'm really happy with how the assembly went. Everything went together really well and this really does look like it's a very nice product. So a couple reasons as to why I bought this. First of all obviously it's a saw stop so the safety factor for that. So with the brake technology that this thing has if you hit your finger or your hand on this it'll shut off. 
That concept alone is we're so much more than the cost of this saw to help prevent an accident, but to also know that that extra feet of safety is there ready in case something does happen. Reason number two is that this is a nice table saw. So I've been using a job site skill saw for a while now. You've seen that in a lot of my previous videos. Now there is absolutely nothing wrong with that and you don't need a high-end cabinet saw to make quality furniture. But there's a lot of things that I wanted to build that that table saw is not capable of. So with this saw, I'll be able to do a lot more projects, a lot of different types of builds, and a lot of different things that I haven't done before. Which brings me into reason number three as to why I selected this saw. I just mentioned that there's a lot of different things that I want to do with the table saw. So a couple things I want to get started on. I want to make box joints, some table saw sleds. I want to get a dado blade to cut out dados and start making more cabinet type things. I'll be able to cut tapered legs. And really, I just want to make sure that everything that I rip is very accurate and very precise. So this saw should be capable of all of that. So ever since I started building things, especially since I started filming them and making videos, I've really fallen in love with woodworking and the process of building something. Not only that, but making content for here on YouTube. So obviously a saw like this is a big investment and having a piece of equipment like this is a reminder to me that I have a lot more work to do and a lot more things to build that I haven't done yet. So not only will this saw help me in doing that, but it'll also give me a reason to keep going forward and building new things and making new content. So with all that said, I'm really excited to get started making things with this table saw. I can't wait to finally use it. And I'm really hoping to make some awesome content and some awesome builds using this table saw. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Definitely keep your eyes open for more upcoming content, especially some videos that I'll be using this table saw in. So as always, stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time.